Hello, hello, hello. Nell here with my WWE 2021 WWE WrestleMania 37 recap video. It actually happened this whole past week, basically from Tampa Bay, Florida. Um, I didn't do any predictions on this, but of course, you know, I'm a big wrestling nerd still. I don't watch as regularly as I used to. Um, NXT is probably the program that I watch the most regularly, if any of it. Second would be SmackDown. Um, then I don't really watch Raw at all <laughs> or the other shows. But of course, I have to do my favorite events of the year, which is the Royal Rumble, which is my absolute favorite, and then WrestleMania. And I'm happy to report that I enjoyed this year's WrestleMania all four nights because you have two nights of NXT, which I'm not going to talk about. Technically, you had the WrestleMania... Um, Smackdown Friday where you had the tag team champions Dolph Ziggler and Bobby Roode keep their belts in like a uh, I think it was a four tag team match a four-way it was uh, Rey Mysterio and his son it was um, I believe his name is Otis and uh, Chad Gable it was also uh, Red Cup Boys uh, uh. so um but they kept their belts and I do wish that that belt was um, with two nights of Wrestlemania that belt could have been Anyway, on one of those main shows, I don't know why it wasn't. Someone let me know why it wasn't. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into what happened during this year's 2021 WrestleMania uh, 2 night event starting this Saturday. I apologize in advance for the times where I am going to be. This tacky had a bra strap showing you now. Yeah, now. Well, I'm going to be using my glasses. I don't have the non-reflective lens, and so it will like uh, reflect the lights, and you won't be able to see my eyes. That's actually why I don't wear my glasses a lot. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get into this. Um, first up on night one, this is Saturday. We opened up with the Universal Tag Team, or the, excuse me, the, <laughs> the Universal Championship being up for grabs. The champ being Bobby Roode taking on. Hey, get out of there. Get, come on now. I see what you're doing. You're taking advantage because I'm not paying attention. Versus the former champ in Drew McIntyre. This was a solid match. This was a believable match. It was hard hitting. Uh, the both men had their spots. Of course, MVP was at ringside. There was one point where he shouted and that actually um, um, distracted Drew McIntyre. And I was like, Drew McIntyre, rookie mistake. All he had to do was shout. He was like, ah! <laughs> it just wasn't enough. Either way, uh, it was enough to distract... Uh, um, uh, Drew McIntyre and this ended with Bobby Roode getting the Hurt Locker and Hurt Lockering him to sleep. He did not actually tap out. He just went ahead and went to sleep. I thought this was a solid match and a solid way to open up this 290 event and I'm glad that Bobby Roode kept that belt. Let me know what you thought of that match now. Next up it was the uh, women's tag team turmoil match. You had I believe five tag teams. You had Naomi, Lana versus Mandy Rose and uh, Dana Brooke versus Natalia Tamina versus the Rise Squad versus Carmella and B uh, Billy Kay. This was a very short match, especially since you had uh, that many tag teams involved. Um, it was a couple of spots here and there. It was short enough to where there wasn't any mistakes. So this was kind of like just an okay match. Enough to get the winner, which was Tamina coming off of the top rope onto Morgan and pinning her, sending Natalia and Tamina onto the night two to actually take on the, the women's tag team champions. So that match was okay. Next up, uh, we had Cesaro versus Seth Rollins. I was looking forward to this match. I like both of these gentlemen. I was looking forward to Cesaro getting his first singles match at WrestleMania, being at the company for so long and being so physically dominant and impressive, but just, of course, lacking on the um, the mic a little bit. He's had he's had a, it held the tag team belts with every partner that he's ever had. And um, I've always just kind of rooted for Cesaro. I think a lot of us has. Seth Rollins, of course, is a fan favorite. I always enjoy watching him. Both men put on a fantastic match, very athletic, lots of counters to it. Very fun, playing to the crowd the whole nine. Um, you had Cesaro doing the airplane with no hands, spun him off there, and then eventually he did, of course, get the Cesaro swing and uh, into the um, the neutralizer. He ended up uh, pinning Seth Rollins. It was a good match. I very much enjoyed that match. Next up, we had the Raw Tag Team Champs, the new day versus AJ Styles and uh, Omos. Uh, I was looking forward to this one as well just to see what this big old boy Omos was gonna be able to do. I just wanted to see how he was going to move. He was gonna be agile. Was he quick? Seven foot three. They said 400 pounds. I don't know if he's 
uh, that big. You know how they be uh, up in the um, stats on paper, but he is a big boy. So uh, this started off with mostly AJ doing the heavy lifting. Of course, they isolated him. The New Day did isolate him in their corner, beat him up for basically the majority of the match until finally he was able to break free and tag Omos. Omos came in. He, he, he was, he can move, he can move. He didn't do anything too impressive to make me think, oh, he's super agile, but he could definitely move. He didn't seem slow. He um, had his big man moves and uh, he went to corner to corner on both of the New Day and uh, did a whole shoulder block. And then this ended with a two hand like power bomb to Kofi and he pinned him with one foot on him. And they, of course, they got the belts. It made sense that they got the belts in winning his debut match. Oh, I didn't see what time I started. Oh, I'm sorry. Y'all probably already went along. Um, won his debut at WrestleMania. Uh, next up, uh, I liked it. It was short enough. wasn't too long. I liked it. Next up, we had the Steel Cage match, Steel Cage match with Braun Strowman and Shane McMahon. Um, this wasn't too long as well. You did have some interference from Elias and Riker at some point. Um, Shane's not what he used to be. He's getting older. Plus, you know, uh, so I think the whole stupid ish is going to calm down from Shane <laughs> here and now. Plus, it's about chemistry, too. You know, Shane's been in there with Kane, with all kinds of people, and the chemistry with Braun Strowman, you know, um, it just, for a Shane McMahon, you know, we're expecting just something incredible, something we've never seen, something crazy, like the holy ish. And to me, this was just a par match for a Shane McMahon, crazy, why are you in there, it doesn't make any sense type of a Shane McMahon match. There was one moment where Braun Strowman, it was a cage match, um, Shane was outside of it, he broke the match and snatched him back in the match, I thought that was cool. And this ended with a, um, hold on. A running power slam to Shane McMahon and Braun won. Again, it was, wasn't was too long, short enough, entertaining enough, par. Next up, uh, we saw... Okay, so this is the one I want to talk about a little bit. My dog is like sniffing at my feet. That's why I'm getting distracted. Um, we saw the tag team match of Miz and Morrison versus Damian Priest and the celebrity of the night of the, of the year, Mr. Bad Bunny. He had the best entrance too. He came in on this big diesel truck with this big black coat to his music. Dun, 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 dun. Hey. And uh, <laughs> he came in in all black. And of course, I'm pretty sure you've already heard people talking about it. It is probably one of the best, if not the best celebrity performance we've seen. I looked it up. He at least had been um, uh, training uh, every day since the World Rumble. I don't know if it was a little bit before that or not, and it paid off. He's in great shape for one, okay? He, some of the things he did, a tornado DDT, a falcon arrow side by side with Damien. He did a crossbody off the top rope to the outside, a destroyer to uh, Morris on the outside. He was in there for a long time. He took a lot of punishment. He had some jabs and things, some kicks and things. He uh, had like a bulldog power slam at one point. Like I said, took a lot of damage, a lot of slams, a lot of bumps, um, and was in there for a long time. He has really great cardio everything that you could ask for from a celebrity and more he has definitely raised the bar and i kind of hope that from now on when they do get the celebrity that they pick a celebrity who's actually willing to dedicate something like like this i know we're not going to get this type of performance every time but just wow did he surpass all expectations up until this point to me Steph, uh, Stephen amell was my favorite but he wasn't in there as long he didn't do as much and there was some chaos outside of the ring and this ended with um damian priest was holding the miz up and uh oh, come on now you're doing too much come on do too much do too much bad bunny came off the top rope and with another crossbody onto the miz and pinned the miz and he just looked like he had the time of his life he was you know afterwards just doing playing to the crowd and the, uh, after oh selling the entire time uh going through the emotions of the match and everything again he did great great job for bad bunny uh next up i think we're, we're at the main event and uh, we saw the women's smackdown champion sasha banks take on miss uh the royal rumble winner bianca blair belair and uh oh real quick there was rain delay on the entire thing in the beginning now i don't know why that came up then <laughs> so this started off with um them staring each other down Feeling the moment, the crowd building, Sasha, um, uh, Bianca Belair, tears in her eyes. It was very emotional. These two ladies put on an incredible match. Uh, it, it was very believable. They both had their spots. It was full of counters. Uh, um, 
uh, Bel Air caught Sasha on the outside when she came off the top rope. She was on the outside. She actually caught her, rolled with her, kept holding her, picked, walked back in the ring and put her back in the ring. So she showed off her strength. It was quick. It was full of counters. They both had submission attempts. The whole nine. Bianca kept, uh, or excuse me, Sasha kept trying to grab Bianca's hair and use it against her. And she did. Uh, at one point, she actually did uh, get to use it to stop her from doing the slam. She tied it up against the rope and did a little submission there. At one point, she tried to grab it. Bianca said, uh uh, she snatched it back and slapped her. <laughs> and then, <laughs> right after that, um, uh, oh, Sasha at one point used the hair to transition into the bank statement. Um, when she whipped her with the hair, she eventually got the KOD for the win. And uh, yeah, I mean, just incredible match. Uh, totally the main event stole the show so proud of these two ladies and I just really want to quick I don't want to get too far into it but I the moment was not lost on me that you have a a, a biracial black and a black woman headlining Wrestlemania <laughs> <laughs> like the first night pretty awesome and I love the way that they acknowledged it without harping on it uh -uh. Because when you harp on it, it almost makes it seem like, well, shoot, are they getting it because we're going to be capitalizing on the BLM or something like that? No, it was just a showcase of these two ladies earn this. They deserve this. They happen to be black. And we do realize that this is something that we've never done before. You know what I mean? So they were able to show appreciation for the moment without harping on it through. Because they could have built it up like that too. Black, 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 and that would have been kind of whack. So I like the way that they appreciate or that they uh, showcase the moment. The ladies were amazing. And yeah, I was, as someone who's watched and who just kind of, you accept that you're never going to see that. It's not something I was mad about, something that I was asking for. You just kind of, even with ladies headlining WrestleMania, it's just something that you accept you're not going to see. So it, it would have hit me. I was just like, hey. All right, on to night two. <laughs> so... Night two starts off with The Fiend versus Randy Orton, and I didn't pay attention to this match. It was short. I'm glad it was short. It ended with uh, an RKO to uh, The Fiend because he was distracted by old girl with black stuff coming out of her face. And then afterwards, The Fiend and old girl looked at each other, then the lights went out, and then they disappeared. I didn't even want to see this match in the first place. They had already done this. Whatever. Next up, it was the Tag Team Championships. We won the Tag Team Championships. So Nia Jax and um, Shayna Baszler taking on Natalya and Tamina from the night before. And um, uh, this was an okay match. Uh, there was just some spots missed. I knew it was going to be a slower match, so I wished it was a little bit more hard hitting. And it just, it missed, a, it needed a couple of bigger spots. Someone coming off the top ropes to the outside, some outside action. Because this wasn't a, um, uh, did no DQ match or anything like that. But it just missed something extra, a little gritty or just a little, like I said, there were some spots that were kind of missed, that were kind of slower than it needed to be. At one point, Tamina um, did uh, power slam. Um, yeah. She did body slam, oh girl, and I feel like Nia Jax could have jumped a little bit more and made it a little bit more snappy. <laughs> but I, other than that, Nia Jax and them kept their belt. <laughs> Nia Jax I came off the second rope at one point. Uh, Natalia had Nia Jax and the sharpshooter, but Baszler, who was a legal man, actually came in and snatched her up in the Caracuda clutch and tapped her out. And I actually, I liked that ending. Okay, match. Could have been better if it had it been, uh, the timing was a little bit better and if they would have just added a couple of big spots. Now, next up, trying to get through this. Hey, come on, man. He, he's, he's just all over my glasses, the phone, everything. You don't even see him, but he's working behind the scenes. <laughs> next up, Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn with Logan Paul on the side. Um, At one point, uh, this match was just okay. I really like these two gentlemen. They've wrestled before in amazing matches, so for the two of them, this was just par. They've had way better matches. Okay, it was all right. Uh, this ended with a, a stunner for the pin. Um, and then Logan Paul came in and he tried to give Kevin Owens a handshake. And Sami Zayn got super pissed off and got in his face. Then he pushed Sami Zayn. The crowd booed because, come on now. <laughs> and then Kevin Owens gave Logan Paul the stunner, which we all saw coming. But we still kind of enjoyed it a little bit. Anyway. It was kind of wasted. I don't... Things could have went better. Next up. <laughs> um, ooh, 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 where are we at? Where are we at? Owens. 
oh, United States, um, the U.S. Championship, which is Matt Riddle, he was the champion, versus Sheamus. This was an okay match, which, which to me was elevated by the ending. The ending was Riddle coming off the second ro ropes for like a springboard moonsault, and while he was upside down in midair, Sheamus landed the bro kick to the face, blow, even drew blood. So again, this was an okay match, which was elevated by its ending, and Sheamus got the belt. So, all right. Next up, we had the Intercontinental Championship, which was Big E, he was the champion, versus Apollo Crews in a Nigerian drum match. This was no DQ. Stop. No, no, no. Please stop. Uh, no DQ, no time limits. Uh, at one point, there was candlesticks. They were killing each other with candlesticks. There was a um, suplexes outside to the steps. Stop it. Stop. No. He's going after my glasses and my phone. These are things he doesn't normally have access to. <laughs> You're making the video longer. <laughs> there was um, stuff on the outside. Um, this was a good match. It was too short, to be quite honest. It, it was too short. Chairs got involved. I, I wanted more. This ended with, um, There's a, at one point, Biggie went through a table. Biggie hit the big ending, but then, um, I'm going to put my glasses on for this one. Daba Kato came in, <laughs> this big old boy came in and, um, what did he do? Made it so, what did he do to Biggie? I'm sorry, I'm all messed up, I'm sorry, y'all. But he came in there. I don't need, y'all tell me know what he did to him. Did he just hit him or choke slam him? Did he just hit him? I don't know what he did to him. <laughs> Either way, he put him to the ground and put Apollo Crews over him, literally picked him up and put him over him, and that was the end of that. <laughs> and Apollo Crews is the new champion. I wished it was longer. It could have been longer. Same thing with the um, the uh, main event from last night with the Sasha Banks and or Bianca Bear, but or Sasha Banks, that could have been longer as well. Uh, next up, we had the Raw Women's Champion, which was Asuka at the time versus Rhea Ripley. Looking forward to this as well. This was a good match as well. Very believable as well. There's a lot of good counters to each other's moves and all of that in there. Um, submission attempts. Um, this was just a good match. It was a little bit too short. I definitely wanted more from this. Um, they both, like I said, she got her power moves off. Good match. This ended with the Riptide to Asuka, and she became the new champion. I like Rhea Ripley, so I like the match. Again, just could have been longer, wanted it to be longer. Next up, finally. <laughs> Did I get it wrong? Is this the Universal Championship? The other one is the WWE? I might have got that backwards. Let me know. But we have finally at the main event here, the triple threat match. The champion who, uh, Roman Reigns versus the Royal Rumble winner, Edge versus Daniel Bryan. Fantastic match. Let me just say, fantastic match. Um, oh, I, I wrote things down here. I, <laughs> they all had such good um, um, counters to each other's moves. I mean, just, and this, the fluidity was there. You could tell that they um, trust each other. It just, it, it was hard hitting. It was outside of the ring. Of course, Jay Uso was involved from day one. Um, he ended up getting taken out on the steps by Edge and got carted out of there, basically. There was one moment on top of the table where uh, Roman power slammed uh, Daniel Bryan to the power tip onto the table, and then Edge came out and speared Roman Reigns off of that. Um, uh, like, it, it just, it was, let's see. Do, do, do. At one point, Edge and Daniel Bryan both had submissions on um, Roman Reigns like this, and what the chair's chairs involved. The chair had broke, so Edge had it with the chair in his mouth. And he's just like ah, and then they started headbutting each other, and then they started fighting each other again. This it was a great match, super entertaining. The emotion the whole way through. Again, chairs involved. Um, do do do. Actually, go ahead and put on my glasses. We are almost done here. I know this is a long video. We are almost done. <laughs> Um, Edge eventually snaps with the chair and he's beating everybody up with the chair. He eventually gets the concerto on um, Daniel Bryan and then of course Jay Uso coming back in the nick of time to distract Edge and get speared by Edge which is just enough for then Roman Reigns to spear Edge and then he does a concerto on Edge and then he takes Edge and puts Edge on top of Daniel Bryan and he pins both of them keeps the belt.
great match, great sequencing, great transition. It flowed well, went quickly, could have had 10 minutes more of it. Great way to end the whole two nights. And let me just say, if you've been a fan for a long time, to see two SmackDown events headline both nights, who would have thought, right? Right. I've always liked, ever since Raw went to three hours, I've always liked SmackDown more. Oh, just real quick, I wanted to say, oh, one of the other moments outside was the whole RVD rolling papers. I just thought that was funny. Of course, you had... This was long, y'all. I'm so sorry. I, oh, there was a lot going on. So like I said, next year, um, the NXT could just be one day. Just make it four hours. I'll make it four hours, one day. Okay? And then as far as if you're going to do two nights again, y'all let me know if y'all want two nights again with the WrestleMania. They did do a lot of matches. And if you're going to do two nights, throw all the championship belts on that one night instead of having one on Friday. We don't need no WrestleMania Friday. Y'all let me know what y'all think about all of that. So <laughs> let me know what y'all think of this entire event. All four nights of talk about the NXT, which was excellent. NXT is always good, y'all. NXT is the best. Um, uh, what do you think about the both nights? Any injury updates? Hopefully no one was injured. What you thought about the celebrity performance with Bad Bunny? Uh, the titles that changed hands? Do you agree with them? Do you not agree with them? Um, matches that you wish would be longer? Matches you thought shouldn't have been there at all? Like the Randy Orton? Uh, <laughs> disappoint, disappointing moments? Things that impressed you? Things you didn't see coming? Uh, yeah. Go ahead and talk to me about this incredible week. And happy to see the fans back. What do you think about that? Uh, yeah. <sighs> Follow me everywhere, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and uh, talk to me. Take care. Goodbye.